Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is Neptune. Uh, today we're going to be trying to use a little bit of science and math to try to discover how many Neptunes can we actually fit into the same orbit, and uh, how many Neptunes would actually survive in a stable orbit for several billion years. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now this idea is actually based on something we've done previously where we kind of placed several uh, Earths and several other planets in the same orbit and we used uh, what's known as a hill sphere to try to identify how many uh, planets we can actually fit without destabilizing the system. Now for Neptune it's actually a little bit different because well first of all Neptune is very very massive it's a lot more massive than um, Earth is and in this particular case it's massive enough to even um, influence our friend Saturn. But um, what is interesting about Neptune is that it actually has the highest heliosphere radius of all planets and all objects um, in our solar system. Here, if you go to Wikipedia and you look up heliosphere, you'll discover that uh, there are several objects that have relatively high um, heliosphere. And this is the heliosphere radius in, um, in kilometers. And for Earth, which is right here, it is way, way, way smaller than it is for the gas giants, but specifically for Neptune, because it's actually the farthest away from the sun. So its heliosphere radius is close to about um, 100 million kilometers. Now, we're actually going to try to calculate this more specifically and more precisely using the online calculator we used in one of the previous videos. And let's do this right now. Let's actually discover um, how much or how far the Neptune's heliosphere is in terms of uh, astronomical units. Now remember, Hill sphere itself is just this sphere around the planet where it can um, have moons essentially. Anything outside of Hill sphere will orbit around the star, everything inside will orbit around Neptune. Now, how, how, how far is it? How much is 100 million kilometers? So in this particular uh, online calculator from orbitsimulator.com, we're going to put Neptune on top, Sun on the bottom. This is the uh, third power route. And uh, the semi-major axis for Neptune, let's actually just confirm it. Okay, it's about 30.0699 astronomical units. This is the distance from the Sun to Neptune. Now I'm, I'm going to go here, put it right here. And what we get is 0.7757 astronomical units or approximately 116 million kilometers. We're going to work in AU units because it's a little bit easier. Remember one astronomical unit is the distance from Earth to uh, the Sun. So it's about 78% the distance of Earth to the Sun. This is a pretty insane distance when you think about it. So if I were to basically go into a solar system simulation here and uh, zoom into our friend Neptune that's right there, basically uh, it can have moons at a distance of 78% of a distance from Earth to the Sun. That's, that's pretty far away, so you can potentially place an object here at almost one astronomical unit. And you can see Earth is still kind of in orbit around it. It will, it will be quite a long distance away before we start getting... Um, before Earth basically uh, separates from Neptune and starts orbiting around something else. So this is, this is pretty cool. That means that its large hill sphere will only allow uh, several Neptunes to be in orbit, not a lot, you wouldn't expect this to be too many, but also don't forget, it's far away from the Sun, so its orbital distance, uh, the actual distance it travels around the Sun, is also pretty far. Now this is relatively simple to calculate, it's basically, uh, if we assume that this is almost a circle, it's uh, just 2 pi multiplied by semi-major axis, and here this would be approximately 189 astronomical units. Uh, so, in other words, this whole distance is about 189 astronomical units. So now we can actually start doing a little bit of math and try to figure out um, how many Neptunes can we fit in here for it to stay stable and to basically not uh, destroy our solar system. Now, Neptune is a pretty massive planet. It's about 17 masses of Earth. So this by itself gives it quite a lot of influence. And also because of Neptune, a lot of the uh, trans-Neptunian objects that are orbiting after or past Neptune, 
are usually influenced by it as well. But placing a lot of Neptunes in this orbit will create a lot of havoc for these tiny objects. But the inner objects like Uranus and Saturn will not be affected almost at all. So let's see how many we can we can actually do here. By first uh, taking a look at Hill Sphere, which is 0 0.7757. And what we need to do here is refer back to the study by uh, Andrew Smith and Jack uh, Lee Sauer. Lee Sauer? Lee Sauer. I'm totally mispronouncing his name. Anyway, this study that actually mentioned that uh, to have a stable um, orbit with many planets in the same orbit, the distance between them should be at least eight hill spheres. In other words, we're taking this number, multiplying it by eight, and getting about 6.2 astronomical units. Now, if there is a distance of 6.2 astronomical units between the, these Neptunes, the orbital um, parameters will be stable enough for at least a billion years. If I divide this number by 6.2, I'm going to get how many Neptunes I can place in there, and the answer is approximately 30. Uh, not really 31, because it's an odd number, and also because it's closer to 30. So, in other words, you could hypothetically place 30 Neptunes around uh, the Neptune orbit, and have a relatively stable system. Now, this will be a lot, a lot of Earths. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at the mass of Neptune and multiply this by 30, you'll get approximately 513 masses of Earth. Now, that's actually just as much as Jupiter and Saturn combined. In other words, there is actually a way for us to imagine a star system that might actually have something like this. There might be a star system where Jupiter and Saturn never really materialized and instead created a relatively thick ring, a very massive ring around the outer uh, star system. Now, it, it is hypothetical and we obviously haven't detected these yet, but it is quite possible and it would be very, very stable. So let's do this right now. Let's see if we can try to generate this. I do need to change a few things here though. First of all, I'm going to, uh, well, I might as well erase this Neptune, we don't really need it. We're going to create new Neptunes. And we're going to zoom into our sun and uh, stop the simulation, change the mass of the sun to 513 masses of Earth, click on add, we're going to add a ring here. And this ring is going to contain exactly 30 objects. Uh, the total mass is going to be divided by the total number of objects. And uh, all we have to do now is change the orbital parameters to be, let's just do 30. We're going to go for round number here, 30 astronomical units. And uh, it has to be an ordered ring. Okay, let's see if this works. Did we place them? Yep, there they are. They're called moons. And before we continue, we just have to reverse our sun back to one mass of the sun. And lastly... I may as well give everything a perfect orbit, so we need to click on auto orbit here. All right, so let's see what happens. So here are our Neptunes. They each should be about 17.1 masses of Earth. Yep, they are. They totally look like moons though, but uh, this is a pretty massive ring of objects here. Now I want to see what happens. I re I'm really curious now. So we have these um, trans Neptunian objects there. And we also have objects like Uranus and Saturn. Now, I did predict that they are not going to be affected, but I might have been completely wrong. And I'm going to actually decelerate this just a little bit. And let's run this a little bit slower first and accelerate this as we go. Uh, now, I'm actually super curious as to what's going to start happening. Now, first of all, I hope that these objects move at the right speed. They should be orbiting in a perfect circle in a perfectly circular, that is, orbit around the sun. And it looks like they are. Now, secondly, you can you can see that the distance between them is actually really far compared to our previous simulations. This is almost the distance of sun to Earth. So they're actually really far away from each other. And that's the only way they can stay stable. And it seems like it's actually more or less stable. I'm trying to zoom in onto the sun here. The sun is not really affected uh, by these objects either, even though its velocity is changing a little bit. It feels like it is more or less stable. Now, some of them seem to be kind of sticking out a little bit, but that's also probably because I didn't really place them in a perfectly uh, same plane of orbit. You can see that some of them are a little bit higher than the others. 
But all in all, this is actually a pretty stable system. Now let's see what happens to objects like Pluto, because technically Pluto is actually affected by Neptune, and uh, its orbit may change. I'm going to run this for a few years just to see if Pluto's orbit actually is affected, but I think one of the easiest way of seeing this is by clicking on orbits. And if you see suddenly things changing dramatically, that's because these massive Neptunes are influencing things. Now, right now, some orbits are changing a little bit, but not to the point where things are flying away completely out of our solar system. As a matter of fact, it looks like this Neptune ring that we've created is actually stabilizing the system, which is very unusual and very, very interesting. So this is pretty cool. So to answer the initial question of how many Neptunes can you place uh, and not destroy the system is, well, 30, you could place 30. And to answer the second question of whether things are going to start flying away and disappear and get affected by these Neptunes, it looks like no. Uranus is still there, Saturn and Jupiter are totally in their own thing, and all of the trans objects seem to be quite unaffected by this as well. Now, it might take billions of years for things to change here a little bit, but on the short-term, sort of thousands of years scale, nothing seems to be happening. And chances are that because of this ring of Neptune around, or ring of Neptunes, that is, around our solar system, our planet Earth is now going to be completely protected from any invasion by any comets. Chances are these Neptunes are just going to basically create this gravitational protection ring now. Well, that's really all I wanted to do in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and now you know a little bit more about our solar system orbits and how things work, both with hill spheres and uh, placing planets in the same orbit. In the next video, we'll talk about something different, and you might learn something else. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. And once again, guys, thank you so much for all your support, both on Patreon and on the channel. I love you so much. Thank you. See you later. Space out. Bye-bye. And before we finish, I need to go ahead and maybe, just maybe, destroy planet Earth by exploring our sun. My favorite thing to do. I don't know why. Maybe I have a problem. And look at that. Everything just kind of flies apart. Uh, not as cool as I thought it would be. But my Neptunes actually have created their own little miniature, miniature systems now. It's pretty cool.